Welcome back to the Real Estate Excellence Podcast. Today I have the Florida Real Estate Wizard on the show. I like that tag. I love that. that just, <laughs> I saw you put that on your social media. I said, I got to get that in there. Today. <laughs> this young man, I can say, and I can say young man because I know he's at least 20 years young, younger than me, um, is an up and coming best of the best. I met him about four years ago when he started his real estate career. Um, he posts regular and his market updates. Uh, so you definitely want to tune in and we'll give you those, his LinkedIn and, uh, Facebook site. So you can go on very informational, uh, information there for everyone. I think you're actually posting it to YouTube as well. If I'm not mistaken, I've listed that on here as yeah. well. Um, I find them very informative. So make sure you look him up on the show and then subscribe and like his podcast. Tyler Fitz with Anderson Realty. Tyler, welcome to the show. Thank you guys so much for having me, and thank you, Tracy. Yes, I, I appreciate you coming on. You know, there's 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 a few people out there. I had a young lady on a couple months ago, um, out on the social media, and you know, as we talked about it prior to going live, that is where uh, you know any of the ex the experts in your in your field, and even the loan officer field, social media getting out there and showing you and you're getting out there and you're you're creating that consistency again because you were doing it before we talked about that a little bit but getting out there and giving those market updates and um you know they'll they'll catch they'll get some momentum and you're going to get better at them Uh, not that you're not good already at them but you certainly uh as my podcast i know as i listen to myself I've gotten a little better, not to brag, right? But I mean, I sound a little smoother, uh, as as my audience will, well, will tell practice me. Makes <laughs> practice makes perfect. <laughs> you know, there's there's one podcast I I listen to. It's part of the um, Mortgage Market Animals. They're um, a lot of coaches and marketing. They have actually three different podcasts, and one of the guys talks about uh, just get out there. Whether it's good or not does not make a difference because you you have to take that first step. If you wait around until you try to be like perfect and, you know, have all the right cameras and equipment, you'll never get started. No, that's actually a great point. We have a couple of agents that have just joined our our brokerage and some of the things that they have challenges with is we always try to push them to do video content and to be out there and to be consistent with it. And they Mm -hmm. struggle a little bit with that fear of, well, I'm not going to do it right the first time. And I'm like, I didn't do it right the first time. I would make a video and I would re-record it a million times. And now I usually never have to record it more than one time. And it didn't take me all but, you know, a couple of months to be able to get to that point. That's very, I don't know if you saw, you know, a couple of years ago, I started doing the little little videos on whatever subject matter I could think of, or yeah. maybe something happened. And some people said there, are, are you rehearsing that or whatever? I said, no, I'm just, I'm just, you know, talking from my heart and just put it yeah. out there. And, and if you have the knowledge mm-hmm. and you have the material down, you just tell it like it is. And absolutely. And I, and I think one of the, one of the fears is think about it when you see your friend on the video, are you sitting there criticizing them? No, no, you don't think like that. You might think, oh man, what's that silly shirt he might be wearing or something like that. But no, exactly. It caught your attention. You're watching it for sure. And it's also funny because there's a lot of people that they're, you're so much more critical of yourself than you are of other people, Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to video content and, and creating, creating posts. That's why I'm on a diet. I'm on a very regimented diet. That's why that's, (laughs) I'm going to lose some pounds because I can look better on the camera. Go ahead. Our look is trim. It's this guy over here. He's tight. (laughs) Wearing dark colors helps too. So, (laughs) (laughs) oh, but Tyler, tell, tell us a little bit so we can get a little bit background on you and the audience, anyone who may not know you. Uh, where, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to high school? Absolutely. So um, I've been in uh, the Northeast Florida area for a little bit over 10 years now, going on my 11th year. And I used to live in Ohio. Um, so I'm 29. I, as soon as I graduated, I moved down to Florida and I've, I've loved it since. Um, I have no intention of leaving. Uh, I, you know, Jacksonville has, Jacksonville, St. Augustine has been my home for such a long time now. And I've gotten to explore a lot of the area. I, I, I always kind of pride myself on on trying new things and, and traveling around the area to kind of get a really good sense of where I am. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of consider myself an expert of all of Northeast Florida, which is great too, especially on the real estate side of things. Uh, of course, I try to focus on certain areas more so than others, but that's just because of maybe where I've lived or have owned a yeah, house. Yeah, you want to specialize in, uh, especially near home, right? Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, but I also, I, when I first moved down here, my, I didn't exactly know what I was going to do, but I kind of wanted to open up my own business. Mm -hmm. And so I started opening up a, we have a, there's a local uh, business called Rainbow Shades. It's a designer eyewear store that sells designer sunglasses like Ray-Ban, Oakley, um, et cetera. And then we grew it to about six locations within wow. three years. Um, it was, it was privately owned company, uh, came up with the name and everything ourselves mm -hmm. and it was super, super successful, um, and then sold it about four years ago. Wow, and that's so, great. Right, right, yeah. So right during the transition of me going into real estate, I took about three months off and said I need to do something else, and real sure. estate was a passion that I had. So, I mean, the, what do you think was the, the success? I mean, obviously, you, know, you could buy sunglasses in Walmart or order them online. What do, you, what do you think was the kind of the niche that you guys had? Absolutely. That's a great question. So it's just like anything. You know, there's different price points for all different stuff. Just like houses. There's luxury houses. There's affordable housing. There's, you know, what whatever you want to call it. But in, in, in eyewear, it's the same. So we have, you know, you can go to Walmart and buy one for $10. Or, I mean, you can even buy cheaper ones than that. And what's funny is that we actually started out selling cheap sunglasses on like St. George street in downtown St. Augustine as a small hole in the wall store right. um, off of one of those little beaten path uh, places sure. and started to bring in some of those designer eyewear brands and transition our business. Cause that was really the main goal. And the, the, the benefit in, in seeing the opportunity was that didn't have enough money to start bringing all those big brands in. Cause you know, it's cost a lot of money to, to open up a store and yeah. get inventory. Right. But what we did is uh, we took the, the approach of trying to find a way to get a quick income started going so we could start ch changing right. our brand as we grew. And then uh, we also noticed that there's a very niche market and it's it's kind of cannibalized by large corporations like a company called Lexotica who was a large, uh, they own Sunglass Hut and they own Ray-Ban and they own Oakley. So they they own the market. Mm -hmm. um, they also own Lens Crafters and Pearl Vision. So oh, wow. they own so much of it and it kind of, Did we saw the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like we were like, well, they, there's some brands that they didn't carry at that time. And we were like, well, we could go ahead and carry all of them and be the one wheelhouse. Plus we're a local business. Everybody in the area likes, you know, Jacksonville and St. Augustine are very local business driven. There's a lot of super, super successful local businesses and local business owners that have opened up a store and opened up a second or a third location. That kind of tailors off what we were kind of talking initially, you know, getting them. But you got to get out there and let people know mm -hmm. that you are there. Yes. You know, because you weren't on Main Street. You, you know, you were on, on a side exactly. alley off George Street in St. Augustine. If you've ever been to St. Augustine, for those who've never been there, you need to come and spend a weekend in St. Augustine, but St. George Street is where a lot of the shops and there's some top restaurants on there. Mm -hmm. But as an old city, there's little alleys and so forth that go off of there and you, you find unique shops like yours. Absolutely. Yeah. It's cool too. So when we started, we kind of, we picked uh and we started in St. Augustine, but then we kind of grew outside of there and we had stores all the way down to St. Augustine or their store, a store all the way down in St. Augustine beach. Now all the way up to um, Atlantic or Neptune beach sure. and Atlantic beach and then Riverside. So it's kind of changed, uh, changed courses and just grown within the area and found the opportunity. And I think it's kind of part of the reason, the way it, that I've learned how to grow my own business as a real estate agent, being and being a business owner and managing 30 plus employees, so, so you, if I am hearing you correctly, you evaluated the marketplace, yep. the, the other company that owns all the, the big names and you found your little niche mm -hmm. and you went after it. And just like social media and so forth, you were consistent with it and stuck to your game plan. Yes, absolutely. And, and it worked out for you. Yep, that, just that staying, is awesome. con staying consistent and kind of trusting the process because there are definitely a lot of scary moments about owning a business, just like there's a lot of scary moments about mm -hmm. buying a house or mm -hmm. selling a house and trusting somebody with that process. But, right. you know, if you can trust somebody that's been doing it, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they've had to do it for 20 years. They just need to be able to be effective communi communicator and know the right tools and being consistent with what they do. Foc focused on what you're doing, and that that's exactly what you did. That, that That's amazing. I did not know that about you yourself so when you sold uh was it uh, rainbow, rainbow shades, shades yep. when you sold rainbow shades did you like well i'm gonna take a few months off and get into real estate or you were like i don't know what i'm gonna do right now so there was always the there was always the goal at some point to uh 
to transition, um, not necessarily specifically into real estate, but you know, that wasn't the end goal for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. There was always going to be at some point, some sort of transition into something else. And that kind of segues from real estate into what I would do next. And, you know, I have always thought of myself as being kind of like a multi-level business owner where real estate is not my only thing. Mm -hmm. I'm actually currently going to college right now to get my business degree and then to transition that into real estate law. So I really, really like the real estate sector of, mm -hmm. of business. Um, and I can see myself doing it for, you know, maybe for the rest of my life for sure. But I also kind of keep my options open and, you know, we have. That might be another interesting podcast, what you're learning in the, or in, in the real estate law is we really haven't dabbled into that. And where does the legalities and things come in? Because we kind of brush over them. There's contracts and so forth. What yes. are some of the, the pitfalls that people may run into? It's not... Um, there are some things that could blow up, be, I want to say, dangerous or at least financially uh, catastrophic if you do something not by the way you're supposed to be doing it. Absolutely. And that's that's a great point because there's a lot of real estate agents, and myself included, I think just about everybody that's in real estate, with the first couple years that you're in it, it's very hard to know what the rights and the wrongs are. Mm -hmm. And your, your schooling and your class it, it kind of prepares you for that, but at the same time, things change on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And their lawyers are always updating their contracts, so you don't always know what kind of hiccups or things you're going to go through. I, get, I don't want to say getting in arguments, but I frequently find myself s almost having educational opportunities with people <laughs> that have been in it a bit longer because right. they think that they know the right way. Right. And I'm very respectful. Because that's the way they've been doing it for years. Exactly. And I'm yeah. very respectful about the way that I approach that situation. <laughs> Sometimes I get like somebody else involved. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and I, when we first met you, um, you were with the, the Welch team. Um, what was your, uh, did, did you just pick them out of class or how did you actually get led into uh, working with Christina? So I actually, uh, Kelly, who's the one, who's their lead listing agent on the team, mm -hmm. um, yeah. listed my house when I sold my first house in St. Augustine. And uh, I had an extraordinarily great experience. I love the, the transaction from the very beginning to the very end. You know, I do want to get her on the show. She's listening. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <That's> you, Kelly. <laughs> uh, um, Kelly and I are great friends. We still we still keep in touch um, mm -hmm. regularly too, and we always joke around a bit about each other's social media and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's fun. But um, I had a really really great experience. I loved. I had never had. You know, granted, this is the first time I ever sold a house that was my own. But I had. Bought, this is also my first house that I bought, and, and I had a great experience on the selling side. Mm -hmm. um, very, very professional. And I had, that's the point where I had started thinking that I was going to get into real estate. And I'm like, I, at that point, I didn't know that Welch team was the number one selling team in Northeast Florida at right. that time. Right. Um, but I just knew that they had the systems down in place. So right. I interviewed um, with Christina and I immediately it clicked. And, you know, from there they had, I think at that point in time, they had four buyer's agents and one listing agent. And so I decided to go on the listing side and really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and that's kind of how I started my business. I started as a listing specialist. I didn't work with any buyers at that time. Now, um, which is rare, if I'm not mistaken, because I've never yep. come across this, and we were talking about pre-show, you actually started off focusing on listings where 99% focus on buying. Tell me tell me what extra edge you think, that what, what in your career and here in four or five years that that has given you that extra That's a great point. I do think that when you, so a lot of people start, I don't necessarily want to say they start just on the buying side. They either probably start more on a, as a general real estate agent working on both the listing and the buying side, or if they join a team, a lot of teams separate their agents by listing agents and buyer's agents. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed that there's a lot more people when they start out on the team, they start out on the buying mm -hmm. agent side. Um, it's usually because there's an agent that's seasoned that has credibility to take over. Yeah. They've started to take over listings. They started in listings typically come from your local source because you've started to build your name and people want to use you to sell their house right. where buyers a lot of times come from out of town, especially in Florida, you know? Right. So they'll give their buyer leads to agents that are coming in, coming into the team and they're kind of learning that process. And buy, a buyer's agent typically works a lot at the beginning on that trial and error, like, you know, showing people homes, writing co offers, writing contracts and kind of figuring that out. Um, but they don't get to learn a lot on the listing side, which takes everything you need to learn on the buying side, plus 
a whole bunch more. <laughs> um, so I got to, I feel like I just got educated in a way that uh, a lot of people don't get to start out. And kind I'm of accelerated your career a little bit. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I'm super, super grateful for the team that I was on because I learned so much more than I feel like a lot of people do in their first year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't change it. I would have never changed it. Well, there's no doubt that credibility because you are being hired by someone who is local mm -hmm. and looking going who's going to sell my house who do i want to represent me and to be that hey i'm the new agent let me list your house they're like uh why, you know why, why would i do that <laughs> i could pay the same and get an experienced agent and, 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 you know they've already got they've already got a list of clients who may already want to buy my house that they have uh, and yeah. so forth so i that could just that is just such a a, a great little niche and 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 like i said just probably accelerated your your learning curve as far in, mm -hmm. in the uh, in that standpoint. So you've, you've been with, um, the Welch team for, for almost two years. If I looked on your, yep. your calendar there, and then you, um, you now are over at Anderson. Tell me what, what is it at Anderson and what tracked you over there and, and what, what now is your vision for, for your real estate career? Absolutely. So I, when I, made the decision to switch, I actually, um, I s didn't immediately go to Anderson Realty. I switched to be a single, uh, or be my standalone agent with Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I did that is because I had a lot of personal things going on in my life and I couldn't dedicate the time that I needed to be able to give myself fully to being on a team because there's a lot more structure in the sense of like, you know, being in the office at certain times and, and, you know, requirements that they have sure. for you. And that's also where I learned to do a lot of the things that I do. So, but then I had my first, one of my first transactions that I ever did um, was with Amy Anderson, who's the broker owner of Anderson Realty. And she brought the buyer to one of my listings and we had a really, really great transaction. We kind of kept in touch, but it wasn't ever really, you know, come board with me. Mm -hmm. And then we started working out at the same gym together and we kind of bonded. Do I became... need to have Amy on the show? <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, all right. Well, to make, hopefully she's watching or we'll be listening and we'll get an invite out. Yeah, there. exactly. Okay. Um, and she, we, we just bonded really, really well. And um, from there, we kind of, I started having conversations with her about, you know, how she, how she operated. At this time, she didn't have any other agents. There was no other agents in Anderson Realty except for her. Mm -hmm. She had a transaction coordinator, but that was it. Right. Um, and I'm like, you know, I could see myself being her first agent and kind of seeing how this plays out. Mm -hmm. and, and and now we have eight agents on the team. Um, there's, uh, we've had tons of, we opened up a new office mm -hmm. um, here in the Mirabella area. So we used to be in World Golf Village. Great area to be in right now. Yeah, exactly. We, we, we have, we've had an office in World Golf Village for years, but we were in a very cubicle style office mm -hmm. and it was in a, an industrial park. It wasn't necessarily like yeah. customer driven. And right. now we just this year opened up a new office. Have more of a retail presence. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. We have a uh, free coffee bar. So anybody that comes in, we have full, we can be, oh, I'm, to check that I'm a barista, out. Free I'm a bar. bartender, <laughs> I'm whatever you want me to uh. be. Uh, I wear all the hats. Mm. So, um, but yeah, definitely it's, it's, it's been very rewarding and our, the business structure is a lot different because our sole way of getting our business has been based off of community events, um, building our referral networks, having re good relationships with people. And, you know, I don't pay any leads for Zillow or any of these online sources because mm -hmm. it, to me, you know, your, your, your presence and what you provide to other people should, can be enough for mm -hmm. you to be successful. And it, when we have problems in the market, when something happens where the market would, where, if they're, if it's ever to crash in the near future, I don't feel like I have to worry about my business. I'm not scared. Right. You know, so. Uh, well, I, I think, uh, a lot of agents um, underestimate their ability there. Yeah. You know, they go and they buy the Zillow and it's like they're getting hooked on a drug. Yeah. And they're, so they're buying it and buying it and buying it and thinking that's the only way they can do it when they really just need to be present. Absolutely. And, and you know, getting on social media or whatever, be involved in the events – you know, handing out their card to everybody. I think if you go back and you, again, you listen to some podcasts of some agents that have long time experience, they talk about like just everywhere they went, everybody knows that they're a realtor. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I think I had a, uh, I had an agent on and uh, I won't mention her name, but um, she was talking about her aunt who had been in the year business forever. Mm -hmm. And she'd work with her in the summertime when she was a teenager. And she was talking about how everyone in town knew that my aunt was 
the realtor. Yeah. I mean, because she talked to anyone mm-hmm. and hand out, I hand out her card. Yeah. No, there was no social media at the time. It was just. For sure. Yeah. That was, that was their version of social media and yeah. advertising at the time. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny because I sit there and think to myself, like, you know, for, I could spend $5,000 a month on Zillow leads, but the problem to me in that mind is it's, it's some, it's, it's right for somebody. Mm-hmm. It's not right for me. Mm-hmm. And if I do that, I'm spending all this money and then I'm, my phone is ringing off the hook on a weekly basis or on a daily basis because of people that are interested in looking to go see a house, but they don't have the loyalty built up with you. Um, I also have three kids. I'm in school. I have structure, you know, and I have the flexibility and I enjoy having time that I can travel and do that kind of stuff. So I feel like as a business owner, it's not the decision for me, but it also makes more sense in the future and in the long run as well. Yeah. Um, So you you said you have eight agents. Yeah, there's currently, we currently have eight, we just had another agent join, so we have eight agents. Everyone's an individual. Everyone is an individual, and at Anderson Realty, we work as single agents. So most agencies in in, uh, Florida work as a transaction broker, um, which means that they have a fiduciary, they don't really have a fiduciary relationship with their client, it's more with the contract and their broker. So we offer a little bit more um, for our client. We can call them a client instead of a customer, and if, I feel like it gives us a definitely a better edge because everybody that we're working with, it's, um, I don't, you know, I don't want to discredit any other agents saying that they don't work as hard, they don't work hard for their clients, but I definitely know that we put forth the effort and the, uh, the, sh- the utmost, uh, uh, due diligence, due diligence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's so amazing because the, the average customer does not know the difference. No, for and, sure. And uh, I had Howard Flash from Roundtable Realty on, and he's very passionate about the transaction versus single the, agent. Single agent. Yes. And I would imagine if you're, you're a transaction, you don't really sell that part. But if you're you're the um, uh, single agent, the single agent. Yes, thank you. The single agent. You're you're selling that part. Well, it's funny because. When I worked as a transaction broker, when Mm -hmm. I was with Keller Williams, Mm -hmm. there was a few times where I heard people say, oh, well, when you work as a transaction broker, you can work with the buying side and the listing side. For example, if you have a listing, you can also bring the buyer. I can still bring the buyer as a single agent, either as a non-rep, or I can transition to a transaction broker if needed. So it's not that. It's when I'm working for the majority of my clients, Mm -hmm. I would actually say I would prefer not to bring the buyer to my listing. Obviously, my wallet might think something different, but my personal, my personal. But you're not going to turn it down. Yeah, your I'm not friend gonna... calls you and said, "Hey, I saw your listing. I really like that house." Exactly. You know, you, you you go forth and let everybody know what you're doing. Exactly. But the reason yeah. why I don't prefer that is the reason why I, my personal preference is that is because I know automatically I do have to transition to a transaction mm-hmm. broker, and then at that point, I there's some responsibilities that fall off for me for, with my seller, and and I I don't feel like you know, I might be able to represent them as much as I prom as I told them from the very beginning. Right. Now, I, I give them that warning up front, but it's still, it's still just something to always be aware of. It doesn't happen every day. No, exactly. And in the rarity of it, you know, you deal with it when it happens, yep. but your, your passion and focus to represent the seller or the buyer in, in, in with all of yourself mm-hmm. is what's going to be rewarding long-term. Absolutely. Um, because they are going to realize that, that you are, you're on their team. That's why they hired you mm-hmm. and you're, you're doing, uh, their, uh, bidding for them. Mm-hmm. And that is going to just, you know, pay off long term as you, you, you know, I, I would, I think you have a stronger relationship. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. With, with it. Yeah. Um, so w- you talk about listing and buying uh, and starting off as a listing agent today, if you had to choose, if Amy came down and said, "Hey, I'm gonna, ma- I need to make some. I, I want to make either a list or a buyer. Mm-hmm. Which way would you lean?" If I didn't have a choice, or if I had to make a choice, I would definitely go back on the list on the listing side, mm-hmm. um, especially in today's market because working with buyers is very challenging. I appreciate the challenge, um, but I also feel like the listing side works better for my my business. Mm-hmm. Um, I also like the challenges of working with, you know, when you work with a buyer, you're submitting offers on different properties for that one buyer. Whereas in the listing, you know, I pride myself in kind of being the expert in anything that I do. And so when somebody asks me a question about my listing, I feel like I'm 
one of the most prepared agents for anybody that I work with because I ask all the right questions and find all the information and put all the information in the MLS and put all the documents in there and read instructions on other people's listings. And I feel like there's so many agents that don't actually do that. So expand on that a little bit. I'm, I'm listing my home. Why should I choose Tyler? Tell me why, and I'm getting a little bit, but I'll expand when you're sitting down with that uh, perspective uh, person who may hire you to list their homes. Obviously, your uh, attention to detail yep. that you just mentioned. But what are some, what are some things? That, why are they why are they um, picking Tyler? And what what are you going to deliver for them? What are you, uh, I mean, if you want to use the word, promising them yep. uh, that that you're you're going to follow through with? No, that's a great question. Um, I think first of all, it starts off with you know the question of why they're selling their house and their motivation for why they're selling, and also making sure that. I'm asking them what their expectations are of me versus them. It's, it's for me. I'm not sitting. I'm not sitting there thinking to myself like I need to go in and talk for 80 minutes. Mm. They should be. I should be asking them questions most of the time, so that way they feel comfortable and also that they understand. You know, if I leave, they don't feel like they have any question unanswered. That's mm. my first, always my first go to. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing is, is that I always want to treat people the way that they want to be treated versus the way that I think that they should be treated. And that's also very important to me because I think it's it's super important for every situation to to be me to cater my the way that I do things based off of situational based. Um, also, just the experience of the variety of style of listings and buyers that I work with. You know, I every single market. Every single time that we have a shift in the market, it's good to be aware of that. And it's good to be a chameleon and being able to change and adapt. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, my relationships with other agents, I feel like, you know, I am a little bit newer in the business compared to some other agents that might be doing a good amount of business. Mm -hmm. But everybody that I work with and, you know, somebody can comment on this and correct me if I'm wrong. But Mm -hmm. everybody that I work with, I feel like all so many agents that have been in the business for a long time, they reach out to me either whether it's at the beginning or whether it's at the end or somewhere in the middle. And they're like, wow, it is so nice to be able to work with somebody that knows what they're doing. And a lot of them ask me, how long have you been doing this? I'm like, you know, I'm going on in my fourth year and they're like, there's no way. And I'm like, well, you know, I well, care. We, I care. We'll, 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 give, we'll give some to, uh, shout out to, to Kelly and the <laughs> Christina Welch team yes. of kicking you off. And, and I think it, not only their tutelage because i know they know what they're doing but also your your ability to um absorb that and uh take it into your personality and your personal sure. drive and focus for sure that's a big part of it um the other part of it is just knowing that you know i my my brokerage highly believes amy highly believes that you know we we create systems in place but we also are all our individual agents and we can do what we feel like is best for our client and mm. so you know i've been doing this long enough to feel like what works and what doesn't work depending on whether it's the price point of the home or the or the the area that the home is in um also like the type of marketing that we do you know we put forth as we put forth a ton of money into marketing and mm. making sure that we're marketing the home correctly and being very creative in it it's not just you know we don't just put a sign and put a to put take professional pictures and um, do the things that are normally required of 15 people. 15 minutes and fly. It's yes. Just, yeah. I think a lot of people think the business is that. Yeah. But obviously, those listening here, Tyler's not one of those. He's he's going to and to take it to uh, another level that 90% of the other listing agents are not. There's yep. 10% of that are really focused and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, have that regiment down that you're talking about, going to give that package. Yeah, we are going to take professional photos, but you know what? If a drone is needed, we're going to pull that in too. I'm sure mm-hmm. you're, you you go through and you're actually going to market the home to get top dollar. Now, yeah. obviously, the last six months or if it's been that long, you know, things have been what we think easy for real estate agents, but really they haven't because I'm mm-hmm. sure you've had some listings with all of a sudden you've got multiple offers coming no, in. for sure. And yeah. now you're really working. Right exactly. Now. And that's the funny part is that some people feel like, well, we don't need to make as big. We, uh, the decision on a listing agent right now for a lot of people seems like, well, I could sell it myself because the market's the way that it is, or I can give a reduced commission because of the way that the market is or whatever. I highly, 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 highly recommend mm-hmm. every single time you're thinking about listing your house that unless you have somebody that you know for sure is going to be going to bat for you for every step of the way that you interview multiple agents. And that's even with me. Like when I go to a with I go to a listing appointment, if it's somebody that I don't know a hundred percent or they don't know me a hundred percent, I tell them interview other agents and ask them these questions because 
they're going to be shocked at how many times somebody is not prepared to answer the question mm -hmm. or how yeah. or how uh, different our answers are. And every single person can say, well, I can do the marketing that that person does or I can do this. And, and to some level, most people can kind of adapt, but are they actually going to do it is one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've also kind of looking back at everything that I've done, I think to myself, you know, I, one key point that I kind of mentioned to people sometimes when they're kind of worried about like statistics or like how much have you sold or something like that. I'm like, well, you know, I, I have never had a house that I couldn't get under contract. And I know that there's a lot of agents that have, you know, maybe not today, but three years ago, four years ago where they had expired listings. I, I, I never had to worry about a house that I couldn't get under contract for somebody. Mm -hmm. And I think that Part of that has to do with the fact that I'm always creative and a problem solver, and it's not about what I'm going to do um, just at the time of. You, you sound your house. like my guy Ryan Serhant. <laughs> I do I watch right? Million Dollar Listings. <laughs> 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 I will say Ryan Serhant's not my favorite one, but he, yeah, but obviously they get to they've those people have gotten to where they are because of, of systems and, and creativity, and mm -hmm. you know you can't be like everybody else. You have to be different. Uh, you also have to. Um, be very creative and and learn that just because somebody else is doing something doesn't always mean that it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I I was so focused on your answer and I <laughs> several things went through my mind of what I want to talk to. You, but um, I, I th today and right now today if you're listening to us and I've mentioned this on other podcasts right now. Yeah, the standard listing agents should be doing their regimen in, in proper marketing and so forth like that. That That's given. But today, th the load is on them because of the amount of, especially in the last, you know, it's tapered off a little bit. But the amount of offers coming in and being able to evaluate the offers. And it's not always who gave me more. Mm -hmm. You know, no. the, as the listing agent has to be the filter, uh, do the work for the uh the, the seller and go, Hey, you know what? Here's your offers. I've evaluated them. Here's my three or four or five or whatever that, you know, you can make a wise choice on, but here's the, you know, yep. pros and cons. And that it's a lot of work. And then you're taking the calls from every one of these um, buying agents that mm -hmm. are making these offers and they're calling you going, Hey, did they accept an offer yet? You know, all this whole drama that goes on. So yep. those thinking trying to sell your own home right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you're crazy because you, you're, it's worth, well, one, they're going to get more. Yep. They are going to get more. If you're selling your own home, they're going to come in and say, oh, you aren't using an agent? Well, let's take 3% off. Yeah, that's their mindset already. Yeah, or 6% off, whatever, yep. you know, that, that's the type of thing. But the, sell, the listing agent right now is on, you know, working double overtime. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's that's a very, very great point to be made, mm -hmm. too, that it's, like I said before, it's very important if you are thinking about, like, reduced commissions and things like that. We're already in a... Not, we were in a seller's market four years ago. We were in a seller's market six years ago. We are in a seller's market today. We'll probably be in a seller's market for years to come. The point is, is that it doesn't really matter if we're, you know, we're, you're still getting more. Your price is still continuing to go up at a regular at a regular rate. We might have had a massive increase in the last year that we mm. weren't expecting to have. Um, but with that being said, there's so many more things that are happening this time around than there were, you know, 2006, 7, and 8, where we had that big crash that are very, very unlikely, almost not able to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. um, one of those is inventory alone. We have, uh, even though we have started to see inventory go up a little bit, it's still like over 2,000 That's why listings. you gotta watch his market updates, go on. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's, and that's something that I think is very important for agents to be doing. I think some people don't always don't always look at the data. I think it's, in, you know, proof is in the, in the, in the pudding, mm -hmm. or proof is in the numbers, and you, can, you, can, you can't really twist specific data about how the housing market, because you'll start to see that when one thing goes up, something goes down, or when one thing goes up, one thing goes up. It's, it's very, it's, it, it trends with each other. And like just today, even this morning I took a look and there's, you know, we're about 2000 listings less than what we were at this time last year active. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's important to know because that means that we're, you know, when we were in a seller's 2, market, 2000 less than two, we're 2, on the market. Less active. And yeah. that's very important because Last year, we were very much in a seller's market at this time. This year, we are definitely very much even more in a seller's market. A lot less and, inventory. But we are starting to see that increase. And even over a couple of months period, I've noticed that our average sale price to list price to sale price has gone, off. has started to level wow. off. So, mm. you know, as a, as that's also important for why you choose the agent that you choose. 
you know, our average in, in Northeast Florida or in our area may have been close to a little bit over a hundred percent. Whereas for like my, my personal was a, about a hundred percent, hundred and six percent of list to sell price ratio. So it does make a difference on who you pick to be your mm-hmm. listing agent. Um, and now we're starting to see not necessarily, I haven't necessarily seen it on my side, but as a numbers thing for all of Northeast Florida, I've noticed that now we're back under a hundred percent sale to list price ratio. We're starting to see some homes stay on the market a little bit more than a week. And and we're also starting (laughs) starting to see price drops. So those are good indications um, to start noticing that we are at least getting to a point where we might start to level out a little bit, which honestly is what I prefer. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Who you, um, you, you watch million dollar listing. Um, I know you're, you're, you're on top of the market and so forth. You've worked with some of the best uh, in, in the local market. Who, who is that one person that you look up to, um, kind of whether you listen to them or read their material or whatever? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I definitely don't think it has anything to do with million dollar listings because <laughs> <laughs> that's purely for entertainment. It's just like with HGTV, so many people are like, well, this is what I expect out of a house. I'm like, no, it's not. Don't watch that and have any expectations for yourself as a home buyer or a home seller. Um, but I also, you know, I, there, I don't necessarily know if there's one person that I listen to on a, like on a podcast or online. Um, I do take a lot of local people. Uh, within the area and a lot of it comes from my just my broker herself Amy she Mm. you know she has especially the way that I run my business um, she does some massive community events like we're coming up on a huge uh, event in October her annual pumpkin patch takeover and Mm. every year it's added hundreds of people to that and it's free to the community but it basically brings people to it's, it's all about um, bringing people together and uh, families and making sure that they know that we appreciate them and that we're community-based driven. Right. Well, you know, it's funny. We, we were talking about it actually earlier this morning um, uh, about, you know, you surround yourself by the five people that you surround yourself, you know, make you up. And, and you have been fortunate um, to really, you know, Kelly has been solid in being a listing agent with a very, you know, like I said, with Christina Welch, she was top team for a long time and better come in under her tutelage, you know, to surround yourself with that kind of experience mm-hmm. and that kind of focus. And then Christina herself. And now obviously it seems like, you know, I don't know Amy personally, hopefully I get her on the show and, and do get to know her. Um, sounds like you have the same respect for yeah. her where you are surrounding yourself with the best of the best, which has mm-hmm. driven you uh, up, and, and I, I just think this, the sky's the limit. I'm going to, uh, for you, I mean, I, I really see great success I, just listening to you and your focus, and when this gets out and starts to spread and one client at another, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's going to be one referral after another for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to have to have to get your own assistant. <laughs> um, so these are my two-minute warning questions, um, but before I start the two-minute warning, I do want to, uh, our sponsor, Stage to Sell Realty, Stage to sell set up this nice uh these nice chairs and table and the artwork here and uh, we appreciate their full service uh stager and have a huge uh warehouse right here on phillips highway um we're probably gonna we're gonna do a mobile uh show and go down and talk to them to show off their warehouse but just to drop stage to sell and thank you for this great furniture and setup but here's my two minute warning questions and i think i know the answer for you (laughs) is it more important who you know or what you know I feel like it's more important who you know. Um, definitely who you know. It's kind of like knowledge is power for sure, but there's certain people that know so much and that you can, that you can pick up the phone and call them and you know that you're going to get the answer that you need and the flex, the, you know, I, I have a list of vendors that I in, in different categories that I know that I can pick up the phone, call them. They're either going to be there to help my client out or they're going to be there to answer my question. I haven't been in the business as long as a lot of other people have, mm. but... I know how to find the answer better than most people do. So that's very important. All right. Now, I know, I know you love the workout. You look great. I assume you're, you have some athletic background. You're out on the – you're going out just with maybe bringing the kids out or wherever, a jumbo shrimp game or the Jaguars? Uh, I would definitely have to say the jumbo shrimp for sure. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, you know, it's funny. Very rarely I get that. Most people say the Jaguars, I think they feel the obligated to. But the jumbo shrimp games can be fun. So it's funny that you say that because I, uh, I, I never was really too big of a football player, player or football fan or a baseball fan. But my, um, my family, I'm from Ohio, so yeah. I'm a college football fan. So OSU, OHIO, go Bucks all, all day long. <laughs> and I 
I've never really been a super big NFL fan. Don't, you know, mm. no, no hate on Jaguars. I definitely do not, you know, I, I, I actually would rather pick Jags over the two football, professional football teams that we have in Ohio because they're not <laughs> any better. <laughs> so I've been here long enough where I kind of default to that. But at the same time, um, I, I, there's some, I've, as growing up as a kid, I used to go to, uh, Cincinnati Reds games mm-hmm. and, uh, some baseball games. So I definitely appreciate that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's on your travel bucket list? Um, I, I definitely want to do a lot more international traveling. So, uh, Peru is definitely a great place. Um, I definitely want to go to the Mediterranean, mm. um, and Thailand has always been a place that I've really wanted to go to. Mm, so. Interesting. Yeah. There's just some new places, uh, there. I never, uh, you know, although finding out about other, um, cultures yep. and so forth always interests me. I always love what the, th- what they think of the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, and what or what their perception is. You know, they they watch enough of our TV shows. They think everyone, you know, it's it's you know, everyone's shooting themselves up in some places because they watch like <laughs> these shows violent. on, yeah, these, these cop shows or whatever. And everyone's, and, you know, but that's that's not really us. But to get get to know them and what they think of us has always been an interest of mine. But yeah. um, so I I actually bought both of Ryan's book. We're big on Ryan Serhant. Um, hopefully he's going to see the show one day. And uh, one day, my dream is to have him on. My my show. Oh, okay. Um, but I've got his first book here, um, Selling Like Sir Hand, or I got Big Money Energy, which is most his most recent one that came out last year. Which okay. one which one would you like here as your gift today for Um I'm gonna go ahead and say Sell It Like Sir Hand. Sell it like Sir Hand. Yep. This is the, uh, when I first read this book. There's some stories in here. I always tell the one about the postcard. You'll read it though. Okay. All but right. Thank awesome. you for coming on. No, today. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Everyone, please like and share. Um, Tyler, I'm going to ask him in a question, uh, a second to tell it what, you know his social media links out there. Go on and watch his market update. Subscribe to it on YouTube. Um, he's, you, you're posting it on LinkedIn and Facebook as well, Correct. if I'm not mistaken, yep. right? And uh, so w- what's the best way for anyone to contact you that might be watching the show? Absolutely. Well, um, the best way is by phone, which is 904-806-6470. That's my cell. Um, I'm the kind of guy that will respond within an hour unless it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. But mm-hmm. you can text, call. Um, also email me at tyler at teamandersoncells.com. But if you're looking for updates, whether it's market updates funny content, whatever it is, uh, you can pretty much follow me on any social media platform um, with the ending of the social media. Uh, like if it's Facebook, it's facebook.com slash FL Real Estate Wizard. Um, Florida I was going to say, Wizard. I was going to add that in there. Uh, you got to yes. you, you so, Google the Florida Real Estate if, Wizard. Exactly. If you, Google it, <laughs> if you just Google at FL Real Estate Wizard, um, you should be able to pull up Love my it. LinkedIn. Um, I'm just starting a TikTok as well. I have an Instagram, a Facebook, and uh YouTube channel too. So pretty much anything that follow Tyler and, and you know, he's focused on what he's doing. Obviously we heard it here today. Uh, appreciate you coming on. No, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you.